Check it out. I'm, I'm playing with these neodymium, neodym, neodymium, neodymium, ne really strong magnets made out of element 60. And I've got my little element collection here with all little cubes of my favorite elements like magnesium. Surely that would be magnetic and react with the magnet. Nope. Nothing. Copper? Little bit of something. Titanium? Nada. Iron? Whoa, Nelly. Iron's very magnetic, and these two interact very, very strongly. So, theoretically, we could use the magnetic properties to get the iron out of a mixture, and that's what we're going to do today using a mixture we call in science breakfast cereal. Hey folks, thanks as always for watching Science with Mike. Today we're going to use the magnetic properties of iron to get iron out of your cereal. And here's what I want you to do at home. Take a look at the list of ingredients on your breakfast cereal. See that right there? Reduced iron. Let's talk about what reduced iron is. There's three common forms of iron, and it depends on how many electrons it has outside of its nucleus. Iron 3 plus is the stuff that's in rust. Iron 2 plus is what's in your hemoglobin, and you need that in your diet for that exact reason, because the hemoglobin is what carries oxygen to your cells and back and forth. And then reduced iron, though, is the metal that you're probably thinking when someone says iron. Can you sense the irony? No, that's dumb. that was dumb. All right, so if there's metallic iron in the cereal, it should be attracted to the magnet, but you see that the particles here have too much mass. So what we're going to do is we're going to bust them up in a mortar and pestle. Now what happens? hard to tell, but you can get a little bit of the iron actually sticking to the magnets. Now what you might say is, hey, that could be just static electricity or something. So we'll prove to you that it's not. Just a second. So what we're going to do next is we're going to float one of these guys. I'm going to put the magnet next. You can see I could get it to follow the magnet. You might say, okay, that's the currents in the water. Okay, I'll put it on the other side. And you could try this at home if you had any of these super strong magnets in your possession. So let's really prove that there's iron in there. Equal parts, cereal, and water. I guess I should taste it. it. Tastes like that time I had my wisdom teeth removed. This is a little stir station that we use in the lab. That's a Teflon coated magnet. Do our stirring for us. And then what I'm going to do. I'm going to pour this slurry in of the cereal. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little black patch there. That's the iron right there. See? Iron. That is iron metal that's in your cereal. Iron. Hoop. Iron. Hoop. Iron. Hoop. Hoop. Iron. Hoop. Iron. Hoop. Iron. Hoop. 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 Yeah, those black things, that is actual iron metal. And you might find that a touch disturbing that you got iron metal in your cereal, but it's okay because that's a nutrient you need. It gets digested, converted to iron two, and it becomes part of your hemoglobin, which you need. And that's why I start every morning with a delicious bowl of iron-enriched nutty bolts and washers. Only nutty bolts and washers provides you with 10 million percent of your daily iron.
Thanks for watching Science with Mike. Cheerio. Mm.